Whenever you form a new memory, whether it's from learning a new fact or having a new experience, your brain has to make new connections. And I really don't mean that metaphorically. Neurons in your brain have to form new connections between them or at least change the strength of existing connections in order to store new information. And that process is called synaptic plasticity. Now in this video, we are actually going to be talking about a neurotransmitter called glutamate and how uh, the receptors for glutamate work. But what this is going to tell us is how the brain actually changes the strength of those connections, how you can actually get synaptic plasticity to occur, at least through one mechanism that we'll talk about. Hey, if we haven't met yet, I am Andrew and this is Sense of Mind. This channel is all about helping you understand your brain so you can upgrade your mind and improve your life. It's all about giving you fundamental knowledge about neuroscience as well as psychology and other areas in the study of the mind and brain um, to allow you to incorporate that knowledge and then make better decisions about how to best live your life. So like I mentioned, this is part of, of our Introduction to Neuroscience series, but I'll also be releasing videos that are less technical and don't really talk much about neuroscience, or if they do, it'll be in a non-technical, very digestible way. And those videos are more aimed at kind of giving you direct um, advice or just my own experience about um, improving your life, you know, increasing your well-being, allowing you to live a better life. So we really want to tackle it from both the fundamental basic science um, that will give you an understanding of the brain and then try to come in from the other side with, um, you know, life hacks, life tips, things that will help you just live happier. So if you don't want to miss any of that, please hit the subscribe button below this video or the follow um, button if you're on Instagram and like and um, just don't forget to check in frequently and see what we've got. Um, also, please be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and um, join the newsletter. We will be getting that going very soon and that will have news and information and kind of a roundup of the best of the week. Um, so check out all that. Now, this video is also part of a larger series, a introduction to neuroscience, and you may have seen some of those videos before. So if you need an introduction to uh, what a neuron is or what an action potential is or um, what synaptic transmission is, definitely check out those videos because they're all um, going to be pretty necessary for this current video. Now, the other thing about this series is that you may have found that we have uh, three different levels of difficulty for every topic that we cover um, around neuroscience. So we'll have a 30 second, kind of 30,000 foot overview of the, um, the topic, uh, just giving you the main points, and then a five to 15 minute video that will give you kind of a bare bones understanding of um, the processes, the topics that we're talking about and a longer video that goes into depth and is the most difficult and longest of the three. So the previous topic we covered was how neurons communicate using neurotransmitters. And that is the process of synaptic transmission uh, because they're transmitting neuro, uh, neurotransmitters across the synapse. And I mentioned in that video that there are a lot of different types of neurotransmitters. There are at least seven main ones uh, that we're going to be talking about. And the way that I want to do this is because each neurotransmitter represents a different system in the brain, or at least has its own particular mechanisms and effects that make each of them uh, worthy of study in their own right, we're going to dedicate a, a video, a set of three videos, the easy, medium, hard, to each of the, um, the different types of neurotransmitters that we'll be talking about. So this first video is about glutamate, and that is the main excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain. 
and we'll talk about what that means. But um, just so you know, upcoming videos will cover uh, GABA, which is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, as well as ones you may have heard of more often, like dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine or noradrenaline. Um, we'll also talk about something called substance P and a couple of others. Now, along the way, we won't just be talking about the biology and biochemistry of these compounds, but important um, psychological or physiological processes that they're involved with. So today we're talking about glutamate, but we'll also be talking about synaptic plasticity. This will help you later on in this course as we get to topics like um, brain plasticity, where we're looking at uh, how different brain regions might change their connections over time, and also with learning and memory, where synaptic plasticity really is at the center of, um, of that process. Okay, so before we talk about the actual mechanisms, I just want to give you some information about glutamate. So glutamate is considered the brain's main excitatory neurotransmitter. That means that it almost always excites other neurons. It makes them more likely to fire. Now that idea is familiar to us by now because we've talked about action potentials and synaptic transmission and how the neurotransmitter coming from the, uh, the sending neuron binds to the receiving neuron and makes it more likely to fire. So that's basically what we've been talking about in the last couple videos. Um, and the reason that I highlight excitatory neurotransmitter is actually because in the next set of videos, we're going to be talking about GABA. And GABA is the brain's main inhibitory neurotransmitter. And that's something we haven't talked much about, uh, this role of inhibition in the brain, where sometimes you don't want to excite another neuron, you want to keep it from becoming excited. So we'll talk about that in the next set of videos when we talk about inhibition and GABA. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, so glutamate is used at about 15 to 20% of synapses in the brain, and um, it's spread throughout the brain. It is, it is just really, um, it's kind of the brain's bread and butter. So it is definitely uh, an important thing to learn about. So in this video, we are going to be talking about basically two different types of glutamate receptors. And... Um, you'll see that the, the nature of the receptor, like how the, the receptor actually works, determines what glutamate does to the postsynaptic cell, to that cell that's receiving the neurotransmitters. We are going to introduce a couple terms right now. One is ionotropic and one is metabotropic. And those are the two different types of glutamate receptors that we will talk about. We go into more detail on the different subtypes um, in the longer version of this video, but the thing to understand is that ionotropic receptors have uh, a ion channel embedded into their structure. So they actually have an ion channel attached to the receptor itself, and so when they receive glutamate from that presynaptic, that sending neuron, um, it a lot, it causes them to actually open up their channels and allow sodium to come inside. And so what that does is it raises the voltage, it raises the membrane potential of the cell and makes it more likely to fire. And that's what we had talked about in those last couple of videos. Um, the only difference is that with these ionotropic receptors, their ion channel is not a separate component, it's actually part of the receptor itself. So they bind glutamate, they open up, allow um, sodium to flow into the cell, raising the voltage of the cell, and that makes it more likely to fire. So um, that's what ionotropic receptors do. Um, when it comes to metabotropic receptors, they are actually the type of receptor that we talked about in the video on synaptic transmission and on um, the action potential. And so what they do is they have uh, just the they're just the receptor, and then there's a separate ion channel that's nearby. And so when the metabotropic receptor binds glutamate, what it does is causes a chemical reaction inside the cell that causes the sodium channel that's nearby to open up. 
So it's the same um, net result. It uh, allows sodium into the cell. It's just a different um, structure that's doing it. And uh, the other thing about metabotropic receptors is that some of them can actually close that sodium channel and cause the cell to be less likely to fire because there's not uh, sodium flowing in. Those are less common, um, but just you know to keep that in mind. Um, so now uh, we basically know enough to talk about plasticity. And um, as I was just mentioning, the level three advanced video will go into a lot more detail about um, how this actually works. But the basic idea is that um, to make this connection between these two cells stronger, we have to do something. What can we do? Well, one way to do that is to add more receptors to the postsynaptic cell. And if you think about that, what it would do is it would make that cell more sensitive to the glutamate that the presynaptic cell, the sending neuron, is sending, right? So there would be that same amount of glutamate there, but there's just more receptors to actually pick it up and um, cause you know that, that other cell to perhaps go undergo an action potential. So that is, uh, th that is what we want to do. And so what happens, the way that this actually works is when glutamate uh, binds to the ionotropic receptors, it allows sodium to flow into the cell. And what that does is raises the voltage, right? But there's actually another type of ionotropic receptor, a different glutamate receptor that when it binds uh, glutamate and it senses that there's a voltage change inside the cell, those two things um, basically cause it to allow uh, calcium into the cell. And what, what calcium does is it basically undergoes a whole lot of uh, chemical reactions with other molecules in the cell. It's this sort of chain of events that leads to the cell inserting a new um, receptor on the surface, on the dendrite. So it's exactly what we wanted. It happens because uh, that, that specific type of glutamate receptor allows calcium in and that leads to changes that um, bring that receptor to the surface and allow it to Im be embedded into the membrane. So you can see how if this first cell was releasing a ton of glutamate at once, it would cause this other cell to become more sensitive to the action of, um, of glutamate. So that is one way that neurons change the strength of connections between them. And glutamate is very important for that. Um, it's not the only way that neurons change their, their strength of their connections. They can also you know, form new connections uh, with, with other neurons that they haven't been in contact with before, but they can also just uh, send out new um, dendrites to that neuron. Um, so there, there's multiple mechanisms, but hopefully this gives you a kind of understanding or a framework to understand the molecular and cellular changes that are going on that actually allow a neuron to um, become more sensitive to the action of its partner. So that is, um, that is really glutamate and uh, synaptic plasticity in a nutshell. Uh, we'll talk more about synaptic plasticity in videos on learning and memory and on neuroplasticity. Um, that'll be kind of way in the future, but um, now you understand at least the basics of the um, most important excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain, which is glutamate. And this will allow you to understand um, the other neurotransmitter systems even better because uh, you'll have this basic mechanism in mind. So when we move to dopamine and serotonin and these other systems, uh, it will make more sense. So the next set of videos will be on GABA. And GABA is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, meaning it makes its target cells less likely to fire. We'll talk about how that works. Um, and I also wanted to let you know that in addition to this sort of introduction to neuroscience, I will be releasing videos on um, happiness, well-being, mental health, um, productivity, 
things that I'm interested in that I know um, many of you are interested in and um, just trying to provide some more direct um, advice or just observations of my own experience that will hopefully help you because the goal of this channel is to give you um, a deep understanding of your own brain and mind, but also to help you live a better life. So definitely check out those um, less, much, much less technical videos. Um, we don't go into molecular biology, at least not to this level. But uh, anyway, I hope you'll check those out. And uh, if you don't wanna miss any of these videos, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to the subscribe button uh, so you never miss a new video from Sense of Mind. Also make sure to like this video and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Also sign up for the newsletter. The links for all of those are in the description below this video. Thank you so much for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Diamond Mind Foundation and this video was written and produced by Andrew Cooper Sansone. I'll catch you next time.